everyone. My name is Mandy. Um, I'm just going to double check to see that I'm actually live on YouTube right now. So give me just a second. All right. I hope everyone was having a good weekend so far. Um, I was supposed to do my live chat yesterday, but I wasn't feeling very well. So I decided to move it to my Sunday morning, most likely your Sunday night. So hopefully the time is not too inconvenient for you. <clears throat> All right, and so we are definitely live. Awesome, good, okay. So welcome to English with Mandy, and today we're gonna be doing our weekly IELTS speaking chat. Um, and today we're talking about one of my favorites, food and cooking. So today's topic is food and cooking. And if you would like to share your favorite food, or anything that you like to cook or purchase, feel free to pop it in the chat. I love to hear about new and interesting foods. Um, and actually one of the questions is to describe um, a food that you would like to try in the future. So let's get started right away. And if you wanna say where you're from, go ahead and pop that in the chat as well. I'd love to see where you're from and meet you. But if not, you can also be a silent listener as well. So, all right. So. IELTS speaking, food, and cooking. So these are the questions that we're gonna go over today. What's your favorite food? Have you always liked the same food? Is there any food you dislike? What do you think of fast food? And do you enjoy cooking? So those are gonna be our part one questions. Our part two question, like I mentioned before, is going to be, um, tell me about a foreign food you would like to try in the future. So any kind of food that is not um, that doesn't belong to your culture or your country, I'd love to hear about that. And then for our part three questions, do you believe today's diet is a healthy one? <clears throat> Starvation is a problem in many parts of the world. What should be done about it? Who should do the cooking in the family? And how have eating habits changed over the past few decades? All right, and welcome again to everyone who's here. My name is Mandy, and we're going to be talking about food and cooking for the IELTS speaking parts one, two, and three. Um, I always welcome anyone to answer in the chat. I'd love to hear anyone else's ideas as well. So the simple definition of food, it seems very simple, something that people eat or consume to keep them alive. And it, food usually does not include liquids. So if you consider... Uh, liquids that would be called drinks, so food and drink. But today we're going to be talking specifically about food. Does anybody know what these foods are that I have here? What number one, number two, and number three? So what foods um, do you see on my slide? If you can tell me, that would be cool. It'll show me how big of a foodie you are. So what are these foods that you see here on the picture number one, number two, and number three? <clears throat> I'll put it back up a little bit later, but yeah, tell me if you know what these foods are number one, number two, and number three. And these foods all came from ideas that I got while working with some of my students. Um, these are just foods that we have talked about, and food is a common topic in learning English, um, and it's something that everybody loves to talk about. All right. So let's go over some vocabulary. Let me see if I can make the screen just a little bit bigger. Nope, it looks like that's as big as it can go. Okay. All right. So let's talk about some vocabulary related to food. Of course, the first word is food. Um, we have a meal, a dish, cuisine, and snack. Those are some words related to food. When you're talking about food, you try to find food that has nutrients, mineral, or vitamins, minerals, calories, what kind of things that foods contain. Um, and then the types of uh, meals that we usually have, typically, everyone is different. 
breakfast, lunch, dinner, brunch, midnight snack, which is actually a collocation, and dessert. So a brunch is sort of what I would consider a late breakfast. And a lot of people like to go out for brunch on the weekend when they wake up late. So maybe at 10 or 11 a.m. and they go out for brunch or they make brunch at home. Some ways to have food, you can eat it, consume it, devour it, chew it, munch it. Any other ideas that you have, feel free to throw them in there as well. Ways to make food, you can cook food, prepare food, make it, put together a meal, put together a dish, bake it. And this one might be seem this one might seem odd to some people, but I'm going to fix a meal. So I'm going to fix breakfast, fix lunch, fix dinner. It's not the same thing as repair. It just means to to prepare. So not repair. So we're going to put it is not to repair. So this is not what it means. It means the same thing as to prepare a meal. So fix. Uh, let's try it in a question. So what would you like me to fix for breakfast tomorrow? Or what do you think we can fix for your birthday dinner? So good. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you can also absorb food. Sure. Very good. Thank you, Harry. All right. And when we're talking about food also, we want to talk about our five senses. What does it smell like, taste, look like? What is the texture? Is it spicy or bland? Is it decadent and rich? Some people say, oh my gosh, that cake was so decadent. It was delicious. And when something tastes rich, it just means it has a lot of flavor. It's not actually expensive, but it can be. Um, but yeah, it tastes very flavorful and it's really yummy. We can put that simple one on here too. Yummy. There are many, many words to talk about food. So, all right. And let's go deep. If you have any ideas for vocabulary on food, so you can also absorb food. Sure. <laughs> it doesn't sound as appetizing. Okay, and yeah, you can also say that food is dreadful. I forgot that negative side. So we always do need to talk about that as well. Food that is dreadful or awful. Um, food that was maybe horrible tasting. Maybe your sister made something and you had to eat it, but it was horrible. So yeah, those are some negative words to describe what is food is like. Yes, and also bland. Bland means... Um, it just doesn't have very much flavor. So bland equals not much flavor. So if you want to take tofu, for example, which is something that I prepare a lot, tofu is kind of like a blank canvas. It takes on the flavor of whatever you put it with, but if you just eat tofu or cook it and eat it, it's kind of bland. It doesn't have very much flavor, but it's when you add spices and um, different uh, sauces or marinades, herbs, that's when it starts to take on a flavor and become more delicious. All right. And let's talk about some collocations with, uh, collocations that have to do with food. I'm going to take a quick drink and let you read these really quickly. All right, and when we talk about food, um, we want to make sure that we use some of these words when we're talking in the IELTS, if possible. You can talk about a balanced diet, um, and just make sure when you say balanced, um, this ED here is one of the words that has a t sound at the end, so it's balanced diet. You can talk about junk food, nutritious food. Um, it can be mouth-watering. You can also say you're dying of hunger. And I could eat a horse um, is another way of saying I'm very, very hungry. I could eat a horse. <laughs> so it's kind of a little bit dramatic, but 
it's good. It's a good way of saying it. And let's keep going. You can talk about having home cooked meals or homemade food. And on the opposite side of that, um, in the U.S., we call it um, takeout. Some places call it takeaway. And it's just food that you go and pick up at a restaurant or a diner and you take it back home. You don't necessarily eat at a restaurant. So take out, take away. Um, and then you can also have something called uh, a sit-down meal where you're sitting down and eating. So a sit-down meal versus maybe a buffet. If you have ever been to a wedding or an event, they may have um, a sit-down meal where they bring you a plate or a buffet where you go up and you pick out your food. Um, and some people love buffets, but I think they've become less popular during the pandemic because that's a lot of people touching and hovering over the same kind of food, so germs. Um, you can say something is packed with nutrients, which means it's very healthy. It's usually healthy for you. And you can also say that it has empty calories. So it means it's unhealthy. So we're going to talk about it a little bit later. But um, fast food is usually full of empty calories. They're calories that have no nutritional value. The only thing they do is maybe give you uh, extra fat or extra weight on your body. So, all right. Let's keep going. So if you can think of any collocations to do with food, feel free to drop them into the chat. Yeah, fast food is another good one. Excellent. Fast food, and the opposite of fast food wouldn't be slow food, but it would be a home-cooked meal, a homemade food, or maybe just a restaurant. Yeah, and another thing, okay, let's add these on the next page. So collocations that you've thought of, fast food. Thank you, Harry. Um, something can be sugar-free, which is really popular nowadays to market something as sugar-free. Uh, on, on that note, you can also say that it is gluten-free. <laughs> That's a popular one in the United States. Or this is something I always have to look for if something is dairy-free. So these are some allergies or just um, non-nutritional things that people are trying to avoid. So sugar-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, fast food. Um, yeah, and another great vocabulary word would be organic. So you can have organic food. And one that I never, I see in the grocery store, but I don't really know how to use in a good sentence, and I would encourage you to look it up, would be non-GMO. Genetically modified, uh, I think, organisms. Um, so it would be uh, something that is more natural instead of, um, you know, made in a science lab or modified. Yes, and uh, my favorite also, if something can be vegan food. Awesome. All right. Well, here's some idioms to do with food. They're not all surrounding food, but they have food in them. And I was trying to think of ones that might help be helpful to you in the IELTS. So a good one would be in a nutshell. So when you are talking about maybe the sec part two question and you just feel yourself rambling on, you could say to make a long story short, or you could also say in a nutshell, this is what I'm trying to say, or to conclude in a nutshell. So that's sort of mean that you're going to say something in the shortest amount of words possible. You can say he or she is one smart cookie. That means someone is very intelligent. And you'll hear teachers say this to students or parents say this to their kids. Oh, wow, that was a great idea. You're one smart cookie. Um, and it's a compliment. And then you want to take it with a grain of salt. So to take something with a grain of salt, and I know other countries say take it with a pinch of salt, meaning that you need to do some fact checking. So I could tell you um, all of these great ideas on the IELTS or great um, 
information about food, but you need to take what I say with a grain of salt, meaning you need to check it for yourself and make sure it's true or not true. Um, to be as cool as a cucumber <clears throat> means to just be relaxed. And to butter someone up, it, it's also sort of similar to kiss up. So if you maybe um, want your parents to buy you something or you want your spouse to buy you something, you might bring them flowers or um, do your chores, and that's called buttering someone up before you ask them for what you want. Um, yeah, and some other ones, piece of cake, that's another good one. We can say something is very easy, that it's a piece of cake. Um, yeah, and when you say something is your bread and butter, it just means that's the way that you earn money. So let's say you're a doctor. You could say, you know, um, being a doctor or, um, you know, the medical profession is my bread and butter. It's what makes me my money. And then also, I think we all know cup of tea if something is or isn't my cup of tea. Typically, we say that's not my cup of tea. We usually use it in a negative. You don't usually hear people say, oh, that's my cup of tea. You typically hear them saying, that's not my cup of tea. So, all right. Those are some great idioms. Thank you. Okay, and let's get started on the part one questions. So what is your favorite food? You can put it in the chat or you can say it to yourself. Um, what is your favorite food? <clears throat> so what is your favorite food? And this is a hard one to answer because <laughs> there's so many foods to choose from. Maybe you have a good relationship with food or you you use food, um, you know, normally. Or maybe you have a difficult relationship with food um, that, you know, you, you, you struggle with what you eat or it, you know, you don't feel good after you eat or you just eat when you're upset and you don't eat when you're hungry. But this one, you just, it's really simple. What's your favorite food? Okay, <laughs> so Harry says his favorite food is meat. That's very vague, but you can say, uh, hands down, my favorite kind of food is meat. I like all kinds of meat, whether it be steak, pork, fish, um, and even some um, lamb. And, I, and then you can tell me how you like it cooked or what you like it in. So... If we're gonna say meat, maybe we're gonna say the types of meat and how you like it prepared. And remember, this is just a part one question, so it doesn't have to be too long. So again, we'll try it one more time. I absolutely love meat. It is my all-time favorite food. It can be any kind of meat meaning I enjoy seafood, fish, meat, uh, cow, steak, pork, bacon, any kind of meat that you put in front of me, I will definitely give it a try. And I like it cooked, I like it baked, and I especially like meat fried. So, <laughs> all right. So my favorite food, so just a food in particular, it doesn't mean meal, but it's just a type of food that you like. So I'd have to say, um, gosh, my favorite type of food that I like is I always like to eat some kind of rice. I know it sounds pretty bland, but you can make rice into whatever you want. You can have it boiled. You can have it fried. You like it with meat or without meat, with vegetables. Um, yeah, you can also make it sweet. So yeah, what is your favorite food?
All right. And have you always liked the same food? Um, have you always liked? So we're going to say liked the same food. Have you always enjoyed? Or have you always eaten the same food? And this is a kind of difficult one. So it's kind of along the lines of where you tell someone, have you always worked here? Have you always lived here? So you're going to have to answer it sort of in the same way that the question was asked, the same type of tense. Have you always liked the same food? You can say yes or no. So maybe you will say no. I haven't. I have not. And then you can talk about in the past and then bring it back into the present. So for me, when I was a kid, I hated broccoli. And I always spell broccoli wrong, so let me see if I can get it right. I think it's two C's and one L. Well, no, I have not. When I was a kid, I hated broccoli. I would pretend to throw up so I didn't have to eat it. So I would pretend to vomit so my mom wouldn't make me eat it. And then you can go on and say, what's changed? And you can say, however, now that I'm adult, however, now that I'm an adult, I absolutely love broccoli. I like it boiled with some salt and pepper, very simple. Um, I also like it roasted in the oven with other vegetables, especially if I can add some oils and herbs and spices to make it a little more flavorful. Um, I try to have broccoli at least two to three times a week. So there you go. All right. And is there any food you dislike? So we're going to take this word dislike and we're going to change it into hate. Um, any food that you can't stand. Any food that you don't enjoy. So, so those are some ways to say that you dislike something. And we did talk about different ways to say food in the beginning. So here you can stick to a specific food if you would like, or maybe you can say, you know, I, I pretty much like all foods, but there's a one dish or one cuisine that I just can't stand or that I will avoid at all costs. So you can avoid something at all cost costs. And then go on to tell me why it is that you don't like it. Maybe it is the smell. Maybe it smells gross. Like I know when I was looking up some different foods with a, a student, we f came across something called stinky tofu. It might taste wonderful, but for me, smell is the first thing that hits me. And if it smells bad, I almost always don't eat it because it just can't make it past uh, the smell. So maybe it smells bad. Maybe the texture is weird. Some people uh, have very sensitive palates or sensitive mouths that if something has a strange texture, like it is wet or sticky or however it tastes to you, you just can't stomach it. Um, so baby food is all mushed. So maybe some people hate baby food um, or the things that have a texture of baby food. Or um, maybe it's too stringy, like a meat that's just too dry um, and you don't like it. The smell, the texture, how it actually looks, that could be a reason why you don't like something. So you could say, it looks like, or it reminds me of. All right. And so Harry says, I hate green onion and anything green, to be honest. Okay. Green onions. Uh, I hate cooking with onions, actually. 
I don't mind them in small quantities in food, um, but they just make me cry and cry and cry. And my hands, no matter what I do, smell like onion for hours and hours afterwards. So I, I actually can't stand cooking with onions. Um, and when I come across them in my foods, more often than not, I remove them. Okay. And then what do you think of fast food? So you can have one opinion on one side. You can have a positive opinion, a negative opinion. You can be on the fence. Uh, you can be of two minds. So it's what do you personally think of fast food? Try not to take this one into a part three question. It's definitely a part one, so it's supposed to be quick and it's supposed to be about you. So maybe you have what's called a, a love-hate relationship. So we can be really honest and say, I have a love-hate relationship with fast food. Meaning that I love, I love it for its convenience and how quick and cheap it is. But on the other hand, okay, thank you, Harry, meaning that I love it for its convenience and how quick and cheap it is. Um, we all know that time is money and fast food uh, lets us, lets me eat on the go. However, I typically feel pretty awful for days after consuming it. I think my stomach can't handle the grease, or we can say the greasiness. All right, so this is a typical answer, or not a typical answer, but this was maybe how I would answer. I have a love-hate relationship with fast food, meaning that I love it for its convenience and how quick and cheap it is. Well, we all know that time is money and fast food lets me eat on the go. However, I typically feel pretty awful for days after consuming it. I think my stomach can't handle the grease. So that's my opinion on fast food. You don't have to have a positive or negative opinion. It's up to you. You can be neutral or you can have a strong opinion or not. It's totally up to you. All right. And then the last one I think for part one is do you enjoy cooking? So do you enjoy cooking? And I'm going to look up a word here. All right, I found the word that I was looking for. Okay, so do you enjoy cooking? So do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you avoid it? Maybe you like cooking, but you hate the after part of cooking, which is the cleanup. It's still connected to cooking. <laughs> um, so yeah, do you enjoy cooking? Okay, Harry, we had the same idea. You can say, I do if someone cleans up afterwards. So yeah, some people hate the preparation of cooking. I know when we watch those cooking shows, you see the chef or the cook and they have all of their ingredients perfectly portioned out in front of them. Someone took all that time to chop for them and measure and things like that. That's a lot of time. It's time consuming. Um, and we don't have some an assistant to do that for us. So that might be something that you don't like. You can say it's time consuming. Or you can also say that you find cooking relaxing. Um, maybe it is a chance for you to be creative or express yourself. And the word that I was trying to look up was cathartic. And I'll write it on here. 
Some people say that cooking is cathartic, meaning it gives them sort of like a positive emotional release. Maybe you have had a stressful day and you're just wound up super tight like a spring and when you come home and you're able to cook, chop, relax, follow a recipe or remember a recipe by memory and then when you look at what you have created, you just feel, ah, and that's how you feel after you've cooked. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's cathartic. It's it's sort of like an emotional release. Um, so yeah, so you can um, be very specific here. Remember, it's part one. You can say, absolutely, I love cooking. After a long day of work, I enjoy coming home and making a quick or an, a complicated, a quick meal for myself. Um, one, I feel like I'm saving money, and two, I'm healthy, but also it's really cathartic for me to be creative and cook something and then look at my creation and then know that I made this. Um, so do you enjoy cooking? All right, so let's describe a foreign food that you would like to try. So a foreign food is any food not from your country or not from the country that you are born in. So you should say what it is how you know about this food, where it is typically prepared and eaten, so maybe what country or what region, and tell me why you want to try this food. So I'm going to pause here and let you think of an idea. Okay, so a foreign food that you would like to try. So let's go forward on the slide and we'll just say a foreign food. Um, I was actually looking at this article recently with a few of my students, where to find the world's best street food, um, and it gave me a few ideas. I was thinking of any of these that I might want to try. Hainanese chicken rice, chili crab, pad thai, mango rice, fish balls, stinky tofu. Um, but then it reminded me that the Dragon Boat Festival was recently celebrated um, by some of my other students. And that helped me think of some Chinese dishes. And I know it's not served during the Dragon Boat Festival. My long train of thought is I would like to try um, something called mooncakes. And there are many, many different types of mooncakes. Um, and we're going to go back and look at uh, what it is, how you know about this food, where it's typically prepared and eaten, and why you want to try this food. So um, I would like to try mooncakes. Um, so they can be a sweet or a savory dish, savory snack, actually. So they're sweet or savory. And I don't know exactly how to explain it because I've never had one, but I can say what they remind me of. They remind me of a tiny, um, a tiny pie or pastry with filling. And um, where I heard about them, so I first heard about them from one of my friends who is from Taiwan. So I can say I heard about it from a Taiwanese friend. And it was when she was having the Mid-Autumn Festival in her country. Okay, so Harry wants to try a meat pie. Okay, what kind of meat, Harry? Or a jelly eel? 
All right. I don't think I've heard of a jelly eel. Hmm. All right. <laughs> but I will definitely have to Google that one. And back to the other questions where it's typically prepared and eaten. Um, so my friend is from Taiwan, and I also know that it is eaten in Taiwan and mainland China and some other countries in that region. Okay. And um, it's during the mid-autumn festival is when they usually eat it. And why I want to try this food, I, I don't know. I just, I really like the the intricate pattern on the top. Mooncakes look really, um, really beautiful in my opinion. So it has an intricate pattern. Um, I know that it has a crust and I've liked things that have a crust before. And I'm interested to try all of the different fillings that you can put inside of it. So just like a taco can be your own creation, it seems to me that maybe a mooncake can typically also be sort of your own creation as well. You can put many different things inside to fill it up. And I like how it can fit in my hand. <laughs> so um, I would also prefer, if I do get the chance to try a mooncake, I would definitely want one that is authentic. So, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, that means having to travel across the world to try a mooncake during the mid-autumn festival and make sure that's authentic. I don't want one made in America or one from a freezer. I want the real deal. All right, and let's finish up by going to the part three questions. All right, and these are kind of, remember, these are generalized questions, and we've talked in the past about giving our opinion, reason, an example, and a consequence or a conclusion. This is just one format or one formula that you can use. Um, it's really up to you what works best. If anyone has another formula that they like for part three or any of the speaking parts for that matter, we would I'd love to hear what, what you do to keep yourself on track. And remember part one, um, sorry, part three, try not to use me my, I, you can say in my opinion or from my knowledge, that's okay, but try not to use stories about yourself. Um, you're going to talk about, in my opinion, citizens, or in my opinion, people, or in my opinion, Americans, wherever you're from. So let's jump into the actual answer. Is today's diet a healthy one? So when we talk about diet, it's not, um, it's not restricting food. It just means are the types of foods that people eat healthy? So the definition, the definition of diet are the kinds of food that a person, animal, or community habitually eats. So things that people usually eat. So we can say, um, you know, our fast food diet in America is really detrimental or our, um, Oh, the word escapes me right now, mm, processed foods. So not natural, maybe from a freezer. So processed foods. So fast food, processed foods. So is it a healthy one? So healthy one, what do you mean by one? So is today's diet a healthy diet? So this is another way of saying, is today's diet a healthy diet? We just replace diet with one. Is today's diet a healthy one? And so we can change that to healthy choice. Or we can even use um, a good one. That's kind of weak, but we can use some other things instead. So is today's diet a healthy one? Well, what's your opinion? You can just say yes or no. I'm going to ask the question and then we'll choose one in the, in the chat box. So is today's diet a healthy one? It's 
So your opinion is either going to be, mm, well, I think that depends on the kind of person that you're speaking about. But generally speaking, um, in the United States, absolutely not. <laughs> Good. Harry says, absolutely no. So that's your opinion. Absolutely not. And your reason behind this opinion. Maybe you can say there is a, um, a proliferation of fast food restaurants or fast food chains. There are too many fast food chains. So um, let's try that. So too many fast food options. Good. And you can go into a specific example. So go in into one example. Um, you know, you can say, is today's diet a healthy one? Absolutely not. I live in the United States. And now while <laughs> I live in the United States, and while I say that my diet is probably not healthy, n never mind. No, we're going to erase that because we're not talking about me and my. So you can say, absolutely not. There are definitely too many fast food options, in my opinion, and this is causing the American waistline to grow and grow and grow. Um, for example, you can drive in maybe a five kilometer radius or five mile radius and come across 10 fast food restaurants, but only one healthy grocery store or one organic food market. Um, even a farmer's market would be a better option than all of these fast food restaurants. Uh, as a result of this, like I said, the Americans are getting fatter and fatter or obese. And this causes many health risks, which in turn causes us to have to pay more for health care because of people's poor eating choices. So I think, um, yeah, if I had to give a definite opinion one way or the other, I would say in my opinion, no, we could be eating healthier than we are now. Okay. So, and we're going to talk about a really difficult topic of starvation. So starvation is a problem in many parts of the world. What should be done about it? Um, sometimes people, um, sort of say that they want to s solve world hunger or starvation. So we can talk about world hunger. And because this is a very broad topic and the world is such a diverse, um, you know, a diverse planet with many needs and many people, this is hard to answer. And you can say that, wow, this is a huge problem. This is a big question. And I think it is one of the, the questions it's an age old question. So we can say, this is an age old question. It's a question that people keep asking over and over again. So this is an age old question. And in my opinion, there is not just one solution that will be a magic bullet to solve world hunger. So a magic bullet um, is kind of a, an, an, a collocation that we can use, a magic bullet. So a magic bullet to like hit the target, the target being solving world hunger. So if we're going to look up um, What's the meaning of magic bullet? It is a remedy, um, you know, medical or otherwise undiscovered remedy or undiscovered medical solution that's hypothetical. Um, so, yeah, if people ask you, how should I lose weight? You can say, well, there is no magic bullet. There's not one thing that you can take, no pill that you can do to solve it or that you can take to solve it. So um, this is an age-old question, and I think there is not one magic bullet that can, can solve world hunger. Um, in my opinion, it's going to take many, it's going to take many different 
government agencies and countries and nonprofit groups working together to address the specific needs of each country. And then you can go in and to give a specific example. So you can say, in my community, this is one thing that I have seen happen. And then go on and tell what is happening. So I can give an answer here um, for in the United States. In my country, we have a, a common place that people can go called a food bank. This became very popular and very widely known during the pandemic when many people were out of work and out of money. They could um, look online or call their local um, community center and find food banks to go and get a bag of free food that they didn't have to pay for. It was anonymous and there was no shame. And so this was just one way that they solved hunger in that community. All of the food was provided through, through um, monetary donations or actual food donations by um, other donors. And I think it's one, one great model of how to help combat or um, lower the incidence of people being hungry. So, all right. So a food bank is one idea. Um, maybe you can say there could be food programs where uh, we in the United States, we have something called the free and reduced lunch program where you can apply and get free lunch for your children at school, depending on how much money you make. There's also, you know, maybe farming and agriculture, agricultural um, projects, meaning that you teach someone how to grow their own food. So you don't just hand them food and then they need to come back the next day. You teach them how to make it how to grow it, give them the necessary tools and set them up. And then they are able to feed themselves and maybe earn an income and feed other people as well. All right. And this is sort of a less uh, difficult question. Who should do the cooking in a family? So who should do the cooking in a family? And I'll put this question in the chat. Who should do the cooking in a family? And families are many different shapes and sizes, so it just, it really depends on how you want to answer this. Okay, women. <laughs> That's a traditional answer. Yeah, women should do the cooking in a family. If you're going to say women, you should say why. Make sure you're always... Uh, asking at the end and trying to answer why, why you feel the way you do. And remember, there's no right or wrong answer. It's not um, a political debate or an ethical debate. It's just your answer and how you explain it. So if we're going to say women, um, I absolutely think that women should do the cooking in a family. Women have been cooking for generations and generations. So why change something that isn't broken? I think um, they're a great uh, cooks. They're great teachers and they can train their children how to cook eventually. And most women are able to be at home and take care of their children. So therefore they should do the cooking, which is providing for their kids. <laughs> so that could be your answer. Um, but yeah, you do have to explain why that is your answer. Okay, Harry, there is no why. It's just how it is. We can agree to disagree here. So, all right. Um, or maybe you should say, I think a family, it's a case by case basis. If a family has two working adults, maybe they should take turns because uh, they're both equally tired. If they can afford it, possibly they should hire someone to do the cooking or have sort of a meal service. Um, and honestly, I really, really feel strongly that children should eventually, when they get old enough, learn how to do the cooking. It's a life skill, an important life skill that they need for the future because their mom and dad or grandma and grandpa are not always going to be there to cook for them. So they should at least learn the basics on how to fry an egg or boil a pot of water. So, 
All right. And we're almost out of time. So let's go to these last few. How have eating habits changed over the past few decades? We can definitely, um, past few decades, we can definitely replace that one. We can say in the last 10 to 20 years, 10 to 20 years. Or you can say um, this generation compared to the previous generation. So eating habits, that would be our diet. Um, so you can say our diets have changed, our eating habits have changed, um, and we can say changed. Uh, we can use words like developed, shifted. They can shift from one extreme to the next. So how have they developed? How have they shifted? And you can even say, how have they morphed? Which is not a common one, but it still works. How have they morphed? So morphed into something else and over the past few decades. And so let's just throw up some ideas of how they have changed. Or if you think they haven't changed, you can say, actually, I don't think he eating habits have changed at all in the last 10 to 20 years. Um, you know, in my parents' generation, they were eating this kind of food. And in our generation, we're just eating the same kind of foods as well. So there has been no visible changes. Or and then you can maybe say what you think should change. Or if you feel like there have been changes, you can definitely bring those up. So you can say the American diet or the common, you know, the, the normal human diet has definitely um, shifted in the last 10 to 20 years from being cooking food at home and having homemade meals to eating out and getting takeaway and an increase in processed foods. This generation is a generation of convenience where we need to eat on the go and continue working while we're eating. Um, whereas in the past, when it was lunchtime, people would sit down, stop working, and they would eat and digest their food and have conversation and then return to work. Or yeah, you can even talk about different dieting or eating trends. So that's a great, a great point, Harry. So you can talk about trends. Ah. So we can say diet trends. And some of those trends that Harry mentioned in here are vegan. There's the keto diet, like where you, I think you don't have any carbs possibly. Um, and they're based on different research as well, exactly, or um, different medical publications. Um, vegan, keto diet, there's so many ones out there. But this is a really broad topic, so you're going to want to say, while there have been many um, new trends in, in eating and cooking, um, I think the biggest one that's happening right now is many people are going vegan. And I can talk to that because I'm, you know, sort of vegan. Um, I think a lot of people do this for many different reasons. And one big reason is because they, they feel that it helps the environment. Studies have shown that animals that produce meat that we eat have uh, also, as a, as a byproduct, a large amount of carbon emissions, and they, they require a lot of water, and they require a lot of land to sustain those animals. And whereas um, vegetables and fruits and things like that don't require as many natural resources as those livestock animals. That's one reason why people go vegan. Another reason why people go vegan is because it's trendy. It's popular. You see it on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everywhere, um, that celebrities are going vegan and they're doing it because they can lose weight, they can look healthy, and it's just what all the cool kids do. So, And then other people maybe are vegan for ethical reasons. They feel very strongly about cruelty to animals. But remember, this is a part three, not a part two. So you want to pick kind of a specific one. 
So it can be popular, ethical reasons. Um, it's maybe considered to be eco-friendly. Or you can say, you know, I think the proliferation of documentaries on Netflix about food and where it comes from has really shifted people's attitudes in how they eat. Um, you may have seen the Netflix show. Um, I can't even remember the name of it now. Uh, there's one uh, called Super Size Me, I think. And there's another one about eating animal products or eating, um, you know, eating food from animals that were just kept in really tight cages and cruel. So, all right. And let's go on to the last one. Actually, that was the last one. So again, we've been talking about food and cooking and my name is Mandy. I'm going to go back to the very beginning because I did ask a question that nobody has answered yet. So let me clear this slide. And I want to know what are these foods? So what do you see in picture number one? Let's make it so you can actually see it. So what foods do you see here? Picture number one, picture number two, and picture number three. So what do you think these foods are? If anyone has a guess as to what these foods are, go ahead and throw it into the chat box. I'm going to take a quick drink. Oh, Harry, you're stealing all the answers. <laughs> okay, okay. So number one, yes, number one is a moon cake. Mm -hmm. These are moon cakes. And I believe these are the moon cakes that have um, the lotus paste and egg yolk inside. Um, the second one are kebabs. And I tried to find vegan kebabs because, you know, I, I don't eat meat. So these are, I believe, Turkish vegan kebabs. A lot of my Turkish students love kebabs. And yeah, kimbap or sushi. And these are three foreign foods that I have tried or that I would like to try. So if you are just joining us and there is a foreign food that you would like to try, let me know, throw it into the chat, and maybe we can all look them up and try them out sometime. So we have mooncakes, kebab, and sushi. I feel like I wrote it really small, so let me try again. Nope, I can't write any anywhere else on the screen. So mooncakes, kebab, and sushi. All right, everybody, thank you for coming today and learning about food as it relates to the IELTS and speaking parts one, two, and three. If you've joined us late and you missed the answers, go ahead and rewatch, and we'd love to have your answers in the chat as well. I will talk to everybody later. Have a great weekend and a great Monday.